Is liberty dying where you live? Escape to Keen at freekeen.com. Okay, uh, we are now on item 8 of the agenda for those who are following along. Uh, this is Ordinance 02015-04 relating to Chapter 94, Traffic, Parking, and Public Ways. Coming uh, before us, we have uh, Mr. Amaro. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, my name is Gary Lamaro. I'm the project manager for the parking services. Uh, Steve Thornton, who is uh, passing out some paperwork for you, uh, some spreadsheets that have been put together to uh, indicate where the parking fund is. Uh, he's the finance director and will also be able to answer any questions you have regarding the finance side. I just want to catch everybody up to date. Uh, this has been going on for quite some time. Uh, in March of 2014, parking services and uh, finance department came forward and presented uh, some discussion about parking fee increases and what the condition of the parking fund was in at the time. Uh, there were projections at that time that uh, the possibility of the fund balance being depleted uh, in FY17 is still remaining true. Uh, we went back uh, after the uh, testimony that we heard at this uh, Finance Organization Personnel Committee not only in March but in May. Uh, as uh, Councilor Greenwald would remember that uh, he requested that we come back and do a little bit more discussion in May and that's what we had done and pass along more information at that time. Uh, the testimony that we heard back then was that uh, there was a lot of concern about workforce parking. Uh, for instance, the parking lots that we were talking about increasing from 20 cents to 50 cents. And that there wasn't enough um, available other parking for those people uh, in the downtown area. So over this past year, uh, what we've done is we've gone back and we looked at all of our operations to try and uh, improve the workforce parking in the downtown area. Uh, with that, as you probably will recall, we have done quite a few changes in parking across the city, uh, especially in the downtown core. One is uh, on Washington and Court Street, we have eliminated two-hour parking on uh, Washington Street from Vernon North. There's now free parking that is open all day long to uh, for long-term parking, so you can stay there nine, ten hours if you wish. And the same goes for Court Street from Mechanic Street North. Those are all two-hour parking areas, and we've eliminated the two-hour parking and, and opened that up to a 10-hour parking. Other areas of concern from the testimony that we heard was Roxbury Street. Uh, there's a uh, restaurant there called Country Life that had some concern that there wasn't a lot of parking there. Unfortunately, Roxbury Street doesn't provide a lot of parking for those businesses. There's just a strip on the side, on the uh, south side of Roxbury Street that actually provides parking. Um, well Street uh, Parking Garage is quite a bit, uh, is, is in a close area from that area. Uh, however, some of the concerns were that it was still too far away for some of the patrons, and especially those who are accessible, uh, have accessible issues. So we did uh, change the parking on Roxbury Plaza to from two hour to 10 hour parking, giving that area a little bit more of long term parking for workforce and for people staying longer. And we also added a accessible parking spot uh, in that area for those people. Um, on Gilbo Ave, uh, there was some parking that was down on the north side of Gilbo Ave past St. James Street. We removed meters from that location. There is now free parking in that area. It's two-hour parking, so people who are down in that area uh, can park for free. And as you'll see in the ordinance, uh, Steve Thornton, our, our finance director, did quite a bit of work on uh, looking at where we are and what the projections are going to be in the near future. And as you'll see, uh, based on the information that's been provided to you in FY17, uh, the parking fund uh, is in the negative. And that is something that, of course, we don't want to see. Uh, we want to be able to continue to run a, a solid uh, parking enforcement and parking uh, services throughout the city. And we provided you with some information on the ordinance that would allow us to get to the point on page two that would allow us to have a solid fund again um, that was in the black. If you wish, Mr. Chair, I can go over each part of the ordinance uh, so that we can answer any questions. Um, if that's something you wish. Yeah, I think so. Uh, do we have extra copies of this budget? So perhaps we can scatter some around to the public. I think it was. 
sheet so it's easy to find. Yeah, it was, it was actually outlined in the memo and it's outlined as the ordinance itself, Mr. Chair. Yeah. And just, just to mention um, a little bit of a housekeeping issue, uh, when, I, when I originally wrote the ordinance, I, I titled the ordinance, so there's no parking uh, specific streets between the fell of the local division. I just want you to know that it's been renamed. And a part of that uh, renaming is so that in the future when we look, we're looking for a this type of information, um, it's easier to find. So you'll notice on the, on the uh, agenda that the, the uh, name has been changed to that. Okay, you have that memo. So as far as the ordinance goes, um, back when we originally made our proposal, we were looking to increase the on-street parking, on-street means at any accessible spot that is uh, directly accessed off the street itself. Mainly the downtown core would be 75 cents per hour. And our original proposal was to change the uh, lots and parking garages from th uh, 20 cents an hour to 50 cents an hour. Again, we heard a lot of testimony with that. We heard the hardships. We've tried to open up some parking. Uh, the ideology of, of the downtown uh, parking and parking services, as you'll remember from the 2010 survey or the 2010 uh, report that was completed, that the city of Keene is doing a pretty good job with what they have been doing with parking. And we're going to continue on with that ideology, and that is that from the downtown core out, you charge more in the downtown area than less as you go out, and then for free parking, and that's what we continue to try and try and accomplish. Um, the other part of the ordinance that we had spoke about in the past was changing our hours of operation. Our hours of operations are currently Monday through Friday, excuse me, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we went down and we did a survey of the downtown businesses, and as you're probably aware, over over time and over the many years that have, uh, the downtown businesses have been there, their times have changed when they're open and when they close. And 8 o'clock in the morning, currently, uh, very few few uh, businesses are open in the downtown area. Uh, you have coffee shops, you have uh, a restaurant or two in the area. And basically, by changing this to a 9 o'clock, the people who are coming in to work at 8 o'clock or 7.30 to 8 o'clock, but actually have free parking in the morning. You don't want to have to worry about uh, paying that year. So we are looking to change it from 9 uh, to 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday. This will accomplish a few things. One is that, uh, as we recall, one of our main responsibilities in the downtown area for parking services is to make sure we have turnover. Turnover in the premium spots to make sure that the two-hour parking uh, is continually moving so that downtown businesses can receive new customers. Uh, by changing it to 7 o'clock, and, and a lot of people have asked why we've changed it to 7, if you go downtown in the evening, there is a tremendous amount of traffic in the downtown area. People are parking in reserve spots, they're parking in fire lanes, they're parking in other areas. It is more of a safety issue for us and it is more to make sure that people are parking in the locations that they are and also that the downtown businesses that are remaining open until after 7 o'clock in the evening will still remit, uh, get turnover. As you recall, at 5 o'clock, you can park there for two, for two hours. That would be a uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You can park there and you don't have to move your vehicle until 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this does not give a turnover for the downtown merchants, and that's one of the issues that we are trying to resolve. So the, the number one uh, item in, in Section 94.94 on the restrictions is just that, it's the change of the timing, uh, as I just uh, described. The second portion, which is um, on the first page, uh, listed under 94-151B, that's basically a housekeeping issue. Uh, in our ordinance uh, for the uh, MEDC, they originally had uh, 55 spaces up on the upper level. They only currently have 43, and that just identifies those 43 spaces. You'll see on their Page 2 on 94-181, uh, the change that's in the, the top section in A in the paragraph is basically uh, at, the lower, at the bottom, it says 182, and we flashed that out, and it's 183. 
that's just to identify what the location is in the ordinance uh, where that where that is. It was uh, it had the wrong number on it. The next section is five fine schedule and summonses. Um, our original proposal was to go to a two-tier system, which would be uh, you would receive your original ticket, and then after 28 days, you would receive a um, $35 ticket. And as we went through that process, uh, we actually started looking at uh, how many people are actually paying at the initial rates. And we have a pretty good turnover rate. Uh, we're, we're actually at 80% that people pay at the initial rate which is a pretty good number compared to other uh, parking divisions. So we decided to, go to continue on with the three-tier system so that people have the opportunity not to have it jump from $10 up to $35. And we're going to continue on with the uh, three-tier system. In the first uh, instance, uh, you would receive a $10 ticket or a violation. And basically, that violation, if it was paid within five days of the issue date, uh, we are all going to offer a $2 discount. And basically that is because most of our, our increases are based on them not paying. This is an incentive for them to pay, pay quicker and give them a little bit of a discount to do so. Um, the second portion of that is the fire lane. You'll see that Ward Handicap has been scratched out. Uh, meeting with the attorney's office and looking at the current RSAs that we have in the state of New Hampshire, uh, we are not allowed to charge less than $250 per fine for a illegal handicapped parking space. And if this was brought up in the past. Um, that's one of the reasons I wanted to discuss it with the city attorney and the city attorney had, and uh, parking services agreed that based on the RSA, which is 265 colon 74, it states that you cannot charge less than $250 for that type of an incident. Now, to, to give you a little bit of a comfort from that, um, we do issue accessible handicap parking violations. In most cases, um, those violations can be corrected. And the reason they're corrected is somebody may not have hung their tag or um, it had dropped down onto the, onto the seat. And we're not able to see that. If they bring in a current handicap or uh, accessible parking uh, tag, we will uh, retract that that violation and that's the majority of what we do with handicapped parking. People are pretty good about not parking in those spots. There are occasions where it happens, uh, but in most cases, uh, it, again, it's that the, they're tagging call. And then uh, the last section in that where it's crossed out C and it's the D, that, that is current language today that all other parking violations will remain at $15. So really the only increases that we have in parking violations are the accessible parking and the initial uh, meter ticket for either not having enough money in or parking for longer than two hours. And that would go up to $20 after 14 days and not 15. Those are the only changes that are being made in the violation portion of it. Do you want me to continue or do you want me to answer questions as we go? Any, uh, Chair, any questions at this point? One, yeah. Concerning the, uh, the times, but these charts that you gave us here, page one and page two. And page two is with with all of the rate changes that are that are here. That is correct. The, the uh, what we're proposing is page two, so you can see so, what that does for us. So, if if any of these if any of these changes if we make changes in any of this, then that would affect. That's correct. This here. That, that's showing you the baseline of what these changes would do for you or for the parking services. And, um, you know, if any changes are made in that, then we would have to look at those revenues, what the change would be, and uh, forward you a different form, uh, the, another spreadsheet. Basically, what we're trying to, to show you, and again, Steve can go over these numbers uh, with you as well, but basically what we're trying to show you is the changes that we're making, uh, we backed off on what we were originally proposing, and we're going to phase this in over time so that there's not a big hit at the first year, and we're going to be able to maintain it more of a steady uh, fund balance. All right, so I guess I guess what I'm asking is, is that, you know, the, the, the time period um, changed from 8 to 5 to 9 to 7. If we decided only to go to 6, you prepared to say what kind of an impact that would have? I would be, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. The, the way, the way we uh, 
<clears throat> the revenues we are looking at, we did because we did uh, don't really have any good experience with changing of the hours, uh, and we did not include any factor for that. But we, we, we assumed that there would be a similar amount of revenue, or, or maybe a little more, but we don't really know. So what we, uh, so the revenue projections are based on, on what our historical uh, revenues have been. And what we're looking at with these two particular items are meter revenues and uh, reserves, reserves parking spaces. So the, the, the increase is in per minute. Uh, charges is what you're really reflecting here, not not that you're going to be collecting for another hour out of the day. That's right. Carry on. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and basically, the next uh, section number two is is uh, what occurs after 14 days if the violation is unpaid, and for your typical ticket of violation for not paying uh, a meter or an overtime meter or a meter running out. Uh, that's where it goes up to $20 from 15 So the, the tiers would go from 10 to 20 to 35 We're not changing the upper level of the, the violations. We're just doing the lower levels from 10 and 20 And then again, um, as far as the, the uh, accessible parking violations in this section, we didn't do any tier uh, increases on those. We remained at $250. We feel like that's a pretty big chunk of change uh, that if somebody does park in that location, so we remain at $250 throughout the three tiers. Uh, that's similar to what other agencies, other uh, cities do. And number three on, the, on that page uh, basically shows you what the third tier looks like after 28 days, and uh, it's going to remain at $35. It'll remain at $75 for a filing violation. It'll remain at $250 for, uh, it'll be at $250 for accessible parking. Provision six, uh, parking rates. This is new to the ordinance. Um, this is a whole new section. This was never uh, in our ordinance in the past. It was done by council uh, vote. So we decided that it should be in here so that people can see what the ordinance is and what the meter rates are. So basically, um, this is a whole new section again. Uh, parking rates, on-street parking. We're looking to go to 75 cents, and those are the on-street parking that are in the downtown area. Uh, anything that's accessible off-street on, from the street itself. So we could go to 75 cents. The rate in the parking in the lots, um, we originally proposed to 50 cents. We feel that, uh, as Steve has done his uh, diligent work on the projections, that if we were to turn this to 30 cents, and you'll see at the top on page two, that it indicates that this all is uh, proposed that throughout the next few years, in 18 and 21, FY 18 21, that there'd be a small increase as well in order to keep those uh, fund balances where they needed to be. So we figured we'd go to 30 cents an hour at this point to be able to uh, maintain, instead of building a big fund balance, we would maintain a, a balance throughout the years. And the last section you'll see is the traffic um, parking in public ways. That's where we have our quarterly parking public rates. Uh, we currently charge $115 per quarter. Uh, that that comes out to um, 35, sorry, $115 a quarter. And we're looking to raise that $15 to $130 a quarter. And public parking space rentals that are covered. Uh, currently is $140 per quarter, and we're looking to raise that to $155 per quarter. And the, the others that are scratched out, basically, um, those are, are systems that we don't currently use. If somebody wants to rent a parking space from us for a 24-hour period, we charge them $5. And that's where you'll see that um, there's a $5 fee and everything else has been crossed out. It's going to make it a lot easier for everyone involved to uh, know what that rate is instead of trying to figure out a dollar seventy-five. And that's where we are. Okay. Question for you. Sure. Uh, when the meters went from twenty-five cents an hour to fifty cents, uh, it's easy math. Uh, twenty-five cents for thirty minutes. What happens with seventy-five cents? It goes to twenty minutes for twenty-five cents instead of thirty minutes. 
Yeah, it still works, but and, and I wouldn't want to see the public ha having to go through uh, uh, mixed change uh, yep. to, to uh, try to make an hour, or to try to make two hours. Um, Mr. Chair, if I might, uh, originally, and I forgot to mention this at the beginning of this process, we were originally looking for a 25 cent minimum. Uh, we're not looking to do that. We're not looking to uh, change anything to quarters. Uh, you'll still be able to put nickels and dimes and quarters into the system. Okay, and we're not doing the type of meter that flips to zero when the car backs out. No. Good. That was another big issue. Uh, before I, I go to the public, uh, one other thing, if you could just run over. What, what's the whole concept? Where, where does the money go? Uh, this is not just the self-funding paying the salaries for the people to take the quarters in to... Right, there, there, there's more to parking services than just uh, the enforcement side of things. Uh, this money uh, basically operates not only the enforcement side of it, where, where we have the parking enforcement officers and, and the uh, administrative staff, but it also pays for, for maintenance uh, that public works complete for us. It pays for annual maintenance. It pays for striping. It pays for meters. It pays for the repairs. It pays for uh, restriping of lots. It pays for new payment technology such as kiosks. Um, it pays for all the ice and snow control and removal of all of our lots and uh, parking structures. So uh, it's not just for um, the enforcement side of it. There, there's many more things. It pays for a section of the uh, downtown area for maintenance, for cleaning, uh, sweeping of our areas, and it also pays a portion of the downtown uh, employee that does all the, the work in the downtown area. And essentially it's a user fee. The, those, right. that, those that are using the parking are getting the benefit of the amenities and the parking lots, obviously, if they're parking there. So. That's correct. It, it's always been the, um, the opinion of the council and for city staff is that this would remain a um, user fee system uh, to try not to put it onto the taxpayer of the city of Keene. Okay, just wanted to try to make it clear. Sure. Uh, committee questions? You have one. Um, it is part of the thing. Yes. That still would be available. Absolutely. Throughout the town. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience so far? Sure. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, Councilor. I, I didn't have that in my notes to talk about. Uh, that's one of the other changes that have been made, uh, as you're aware, over the last year, year and a half. Uh, <coughs> Park Mobile is a system that actually you can use with, a, with any type of cell phone. Uh, you can utilize it with a regular flip phone or you can use it with an iPhone. And basically you set up a, uh, an account in advance or you can set it up while you're there. There's numbers on every one of the, the uh, poles that are downtown where the meters are and there's zone numbers on, on those poles. So what you do is you set up the account and you're able to pay for your parking on that telephone through your account. We have an administrative side that we carry with our um, iPhones that tells who's been paid and who has not been paid. So the system actually is increasing every month. We're getting tra uh, more and more transactions every month. It's built every month. And we're still today um, getting new new people, new users on the on the Park Mobile system. We're still trying to push it out there to people who have had violations and they come in here and we, we explain it to them that they could do it on their phones and through their credit cards. And we have found that we thought it might have been more of the younger generation that would use it. Um, but what we're finding is, is that more in more of the um, people who are 19 to 20 years old that like technology are using it more and more and they like it. A lot of downtown employees use it because it will send you a text that if you're going to run out of time, you can actually add time to your... And you don't have to go back to your You don't have to go back to your meeting. You can do it right from your phone from sitting in your office. So it, it is a great system. That's not something we're intending to do away with. As many options as we can give our customers and our users, uh, I think the better off we are. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, I would just point out that uh, on our desks, uh, we received a petition. Uh, Dory O'Meara, downtown property owner, uh, posted something in the Sentinel. It's an online petition, and uh, I haven't counted, but she tells me it's over 100 people are not very impressed with this uh, uh, concept of this fee increase. <clears throat> and also uh, on our desks, uh, we were given a copy of what was the petition last year, and it just 
just for informational sake on that. So at this point, uh, opening up for uh, public questions, comments, and first hand up. Yes, sir. I'm hoping the name and address. Uh, Dave Crawford, Marble Street. And my request is that you not vote for this. Um, I think it's um, <clears throat> well with the pumpkin fest being taken away, and a lot of people were against that. And then the registration fees that the new registration fees, and a lot of people were against that. And then now this. <coughs> Um, maybe you could put it off or something. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, but, um, oh yeah, there's one part I thought was okay, and that's no fees till 9 o'clock. And I can go to duties without um, having to pay a meter. Um, but besides that, uh, I'm asking that you keep it the same. Well, basically. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Good evening. <clears throat> JP Matt Phillips off of Water Street. I got three kids at Willow. Um, first of all, you got an 80%. You name? Your name again slow. Matt Phillips, Water Street, off of Water Street. I got three kids at Willow School. Um, the reason why you got 80%. Uh, don't pat yourself on the back. You're taking a cause by force. That's why they're paying. I just wanted to make the note of that. I, I think it's uh, the, the question I have is where do they get this merchant, uh, you know, turnover? Where, where do, is, is there some type of? Did you guys go and ask the merchants because Dory's what a merchant. She doesn't want it. Um, do they all want to turn over, or is it just not her? I'm pretty sure all of them are going to dislike the increase. So where did you get the, uh, the idea that it's going to cause turnover for their business? That, that doesn't make any sense. You've got no proof for anything in front of you saying, saying that. And you're in the negative. Just get rid of the pocket force. It's, it's a no-brainer. I know if I buy groceries in my, and something's not costing right, I'm not going to get it. So if, if you're in the negative, get rid of it or make some downgrades instead of coming in here every year and trying to figure out how to get more revenue from us. That's it. Thank you. Uh, I, I guess I could uh, somewhat speak to the concept of turnover. Uh, <clears throat> being, I spent 20 years as a, as a downtown clothing merchant, and uh, in my second life, I became a landlord. In the space uh, where my office currently is, uh, there used to be a restaurant called Foodies. Every day, the owner would park his motorcycle in front, his manager would park next to him, and an employee would park next to him. Yeah, right along Main Street, and they complain that there's no parking. So, uh, you may notice the foodies is no longer with us, and that I think of as, uh, as a very, very big statement. It's critical that the parking spaces continue to turn over to bring in new people. It's a very unfortunate fact of reality. Again, I'm speaking with years of dealing with it. The convenience of a downtown merchant or a downtown resident being able to just plant their car right at the front door of their store overwhelms the, the logic that that space is for their customers. And without those parking meters, trust me, those spaces would never turn off. How much the meter fee is, that's, what, that's the issue. Uh, the turnover concept has been proven repeatedly, uh, not only in Keene, but also, uh, uh, well, all around. There was a period of time in the middle 80s when uh, the merchants were offered the ability, uh, no parking meters. And I think, uh, Gary, you have the dates on that. And the merchant community came to the council and said, please put those meters back because the meters were just clogged because they were not turning over. So again, uh, the biggest issue that is before us and we need to you know, hear from all of you present Specifically, is uh, this is a very complex plan. It involves timing, it, it involves the fees for the parking, it involves the fines and all the fine schedules. It's a very moving uh, picture. And as Council Clark uh, alluded to, 
if we change one issue, one portion of this, it changes the whole result all through the spreadsheet. So we, everything's on the table. Uh, the reality is uh, we need more funds, apparently, uh, for the operation. I do want to ask uh, at some point uh, about is there an effort to reduce the expenditures? Have we been successful at all at cutting our overhead, uh, making employee, employee scheduling different, perhaps? Uh, we're down to two, uh, two collectors, or whatever, technologists, or whatever the phrase is, uh, since we're minus a one. Any thoughts on that? So I think, yeah, the question that I, that I believe I heard was that we looked at uh, trying to downsize the parking enforcement well, the we're overall sure expenditures of the entire parking. Program. Right. We've gone through we've gone through that exercise. We've gone through that through the budgeting process as well this year, and you know some of the things that we're looking at is to try and uh, decrease one of the, ve the vehicles that we currently have uh, into a smaller vehicle that uh, wouldn't be so expensive because of where we are in the downtown area, but we still do need uh, vehicles to be able to move around. We looked at the operations itself um, as to how we how we. Uh, have people on the street. We currently have one full-time and one part-time person. Uh, we are in the process right now, as we've discussed in the past, about putting the other part-time personnel back on uh, to be able to make sure that our turnover rates are, uh, the two-hour turnovers are, are uh, completed, and that we have enough people on the street to be able to enforce uh, the compliance and to make sure that things are safe and, and uh, for everybody in the downtown area. We. Um, we didn't. We haven't gone through and raised any of our um, our budgets at all uh, since I've been here. We've been level lining all of our processes. We're trying to find other ways to purchase uh, things. We're working on a grant right now for uh, EV charges to try and decrease the cost to the to the city or to the users. So we are looking at different ways and alternatives to be able to uh, purchase some of the equipment that we need. We do have uh, our handheld units that are in the process now of, as an all technology, uh, outdating themselves. Uh, we're having uh, breakdown issues, so we're we're again in the process of looking how we can fund some new some new units. So um, our budget is uh, pretty slim. If you look at what we do and the amount of money that we have on the operating side, is is really not a lot of money. Um, I think our basic. Uh, our biggest uh, line item that we have is operating supplies, which is uh, basically about seventeen thousand dollars, and that's to purchase all of the equipment that I, that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. The other process that we're working on right now is uh, because of the Wall Street parking garage, uh, the amount of work that needs to be done to that to that uh, structure. And again, it's it's not anyone's fault. It's more of the climate that we're in that we have to put quite a bit of money into that facility. One of the uh, ways to prevent some of that and maybe not do this all in one, one uh, instance is to do maintenance more often, which means cost. Uh, that's why we're looking at pressure washing and sealing our, our decks to be able to prevent them. Um, there's a cost, increased cost to the material that we use for the icing. We can't use typical salt or uh, calcium chloride on these decks because it's causing damage to them. So there's an increased cost to the, to the material that we have to use. And those are the types of things that we're trying to do the best we can is um, looking at the best way we can to be able to do these functions and not increase the cost. Okay. Other public... Uh, you were up next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, my name is Peter Bradshaw. I reside in West Keene, Greenbrier Road, and I need to be specific. You read the Sentinel, and it always talks about increasing revenue, which is an alarming thing from the public. I appreciate you asked you know, about expenses. I'd be curious to see where the expense side of the department went in the last 5, 10, 15 years versus the expense side. I didn't get a copy of that, and that's fine. I can get all this stuff um, later. But it's hard enough to find parking in town, uh, I think the city did a <coughs> unique job at redoing Center Street. They created, I think, 11 or 12 spaces on Center Street. Three of them are reserved. <coughs> Three or four of them are always taken up by the Sheriff's Department, and the rest are for the public. It didn't really create public parking. It's public parking, but the public can very rarely find parking there. I'm really concerned 
at you know this whole we got to increase revenue. I think of things that cost the city revenue. We built a new fire station on Vernon Street, reduced the size of the available public parking. Now the fire department's back over there, so there's, there's got to be a revenue loss there because there's just not enough public parking there. City employees now park behind City Hall. There was revenue generated there. So there are lots of things that I see from my perspective of why the revenue fails, because it just has gone away because of the changes that the city has um, manipulated how we park. I still would love to see a parking structure over on Elm Street. You want to talk about creating parking for the public? That would do it. It was the vision 20 years ago when I was on the council. There was going to be a deck there. It was supposed to be a component of the fire department rebuild. That was the deck. I remember it very well. <coughs> Councilor Greenwald, Councilor Filio can probably remember that because we're probably only three in the room here when that was discussed. Increasing the fees is not something we should do. If nothing else, I think, you know, putting this on more time, really evaluating it, let the public understand what all of this is. Because as we all know, and this is just the way the process is, the council is privy to all of this stuff long before the public is. Um, I just think we really need to slow down. Um, there are more people working for the public, for the parking department now than ever were. Makes me wonder, how did it work before at a much lesser expense? And things seem to work. Now we, it just doesn't seem to work as well and we've got more people working in this entity. So, you know, the city's going to do what it, what it feels it needs to do. But like any business, and the city is in the business, don't always look at the ways to raise more money. Look at the ways to keep your expenses in check. And I think that's, that's the flaw of a lot of businesses, and the city is in the business. And you know, just kind of slow down a little bit. We all feel the crunch with property taxes. We're not going to feel the crunch with registering our cars. Just take a deep breath. This doesn't have to be done tonight. It doesn't have to be done next week. But you really want to get the public behind this. Explain it. Take your time. And then maybe more people will understand what's going on. Because right now, they don't understand why. So please take your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're good. Ian Freeman, uh, 63 Emerald Street. I've got a few comments uh, to what you said, Mitch, before about uh, the idea of turnover. There are towns in New Hampshire and even cities like Laconia and uh, Newport, which I believe is a town. They have downtowns, they have businesses downtown, but there are no parking meters, and those businesses are still there. So it seems like everything's working out there. I believe Laconia may have a two-hour limit, but no meters, so I'm not sure exactly. So there's some something, but... Um, not what we have here in Keene. And I think that, uh, you know, history has proven that centralized command and control doesn't work very effectively as far as organizing and you know, getting things done uh, on an efficient basis. That's why we see governments tend to aggregate, uh, aggregate more power to themselves, aggregate more, uh, you know, try to grow the bureaucracy, grow the size, the amount of the employees, and in this case, grow the revenue as well, despite what people want. And it seems to me that people do not want this. I mean, you have the petitions in front of you, the one that was just given to you by, I believe it was Dory O'Meara. Um, it's my understanding, I've seen the petition, I've signed it. Uh, that petition was started just one day ago. So this whole thing just sort of came out of nowhere. It, was, it happened last year, as you know, and it sort of get, seemed to get sort of taken off the table. And then all of a sudden, at least from my perspective, it just came back this week, literally two days ago I found out about it, and that's probably why, that's probably when everybody found out it was a Sentinel article that came out. So Dory started this petition. So you're looking at 140 plus uh, petition signatures on her petition. That was within a 24 hour period. Uh, the petition that I left there for you uh, was the one from last year, which has dozens of business owners, specifically business owners on it, uh, signing their opposition to what were very, very similar proposed increases last year. I understand that there are a couple of tweaks that have been made that are not exactly the same, but for the most part, it seems very similar. So it seems clear to me that many business owners don't want this. Now, you certainly can find some examples of some business owners 
who seem to be okay with this idea. Um, but really, what this is one of the problems with uh, the centralized sort of command and control concept is that you will make some business owners happy and other business owners will be upset about it. The seems like to me the solution here is, well, first of all, you can do nothing and that would be better than, than passing this rate increase. But if you really want to increase the viability and the vitality of downtown Keene, then cutting back on costs, as the last speaker suggested, is, is actually a pretty good idea. Um, there have been times where James Cleveland, who um, you know, has analyzed a lot of the numbers from the city, he's gone in downtown and he looked at different times of the day. Many times the enforcement is happening when there are open spaces all over the place. So you've got the parking enforcers, who now call themselves parking services. Um, I don't think anyone's been fooled. They're still parking enforcers. They're going downtown and they're writing tickets when there are open spaces next to the cars that they're writing tickets on. So that's not about turnover in that case. That's about generating revenue, and it's, it's pretty obvious about that. So if enforcement is to continue, perhaps it should only continue during the busiest times of the day, during lunchtime, and then maybe in the evening, whatever the, you know, the two or three busiest times are, that would allow you to, to cut back the amount of staff on the parking enforcement department. Um, and I, I know Gary here is doing the best that he can, but his is a new position. The parking department didn't have that before. That's another one that, that could be eliminated. And I would like to compliment him on uh, the idea of actually removing some of the, um, the what was it, the 10-hour parking, or the, making the two-hour parking, 10-hour parking, I already talked about that. I think that's good. So more free parking is, is certainly a good thing. But ultimately, for businesses that are concerned about uh, the turnover issue, you gave a great example of this you know, business owner who didn't really seem to care about parking in front of his own business. No wonder he's out of business. You know, every business I've ever been to as a, an employee, the rule was you park out back. You know, if you work at Walmart, you park out back. That kind of thing. Um, so it's in the business owner's best interest to manage parking in a way that works best for their customers. And so one other, you know, the most, uh, I think, effective example of what could be done here is to eliminate the parking department entirely and then cede the parking spaces to the, the property owners in downtown and let the property owners decide how best to allocate those spaces. That would allow for a marketplace of ideas. Maybe some would you know, keep parking meters there. Maybe some would have somebody you know, sort of monitoring things. Uh, a tow truck could possibly enforce uh, rules. There are parking lots that are privately run in different parts of New Hampshire, and they have their own methods of, of doing things. So I'd say let the, let the market decide on this, and please, at the very least, don't move forward with, uh, with this idea. I think it's pretty clear that people don't like it. Oh, and the one petition I didn't print out for you was the one that we collected last year. People downtown, uh, just on the streets. So the one Dory did was an online. The one last year was people actually hitting the streets and talking to folks. We got over 640 signatures uh, on that petition in a relatively, I think, two week uh, time frame. So thanks for listening and uh, happy to answer. Thank you. Oh, and I have one question if you could ask uh, Derek. The uh, Park Mobile application, how many users um, do they have? You mentioned it's been increasing, but what's the total? Do you know um, the actual transaction number, um, I don't know what the last months were, but I know we're uh, bringing in somewhere around $1,200 uh, a month off the Park Mobile system. I can get those uh, transaction numbers. Those are typically what we track on the on our um, the finance portion of it. We just track the numbers. Mm -hmm. But we can get those numbers uh, on the transactions. They have increased every month. Uh, how many users? Right. It'll get, it, it actually will tell you how many transactions you have per month, uh, because the same user could be using that uh, five days a week. Okay, but do you, don't, you don't have the, the user numbers as far as you said they were increasing the no. numbers of users, and you know the demographics of that. Right, we know the financial side of it, that you know, how much money we're bringing in off of Park Mobile, but um, I can get those numbers for you for the uh, transactions. Thank you. Thank you. Other lady in the back, and then the gentleman in the front. And then you. Good evening. I'm Kelly Darwin Snow, uh, 490 Washington Street, and I have a couple of questions and a couple of comments. Uh, I co own a business right here, downtown, um, a new hair salon. I've been here about a month, so I'm not really in favor of this because um, there's six hair salons. And I don't know, I can't speak to everybody in here if you've been into a hair salon. But if you're a lady, and sometimes even a man, you don't always get out of a hair salon within uh, a two hour period. So with that said, a lot of our customers that I've had in, in the um, last month 
that we've had are getting tickets. So they paid the tickets and they're still coming to our guest lounge, but that's a huge jump for us, you know, for people to pay from $5 to $10 a ticket. So that's just kind of a, a comment. So I'm not in favor of this. Um, I know a lot of our other sister and brother hair salons are really not in favor of that. It's kind of a different business than some people have where you're running in and out, but it's still a viable business and we're down here. Um, another um, qu a question that I might have is, we spoke about changing the times where I think it's now um, eight to five and that it's being enforced and talking about changing it to nine to seven. So is that going to have another five hours of labor um, that you have to, that you'll have to have, you know, get revenue for? Um, and then I have also a concern about um, in the last two weeks, uh, by the way, I do want to say, and I'm addressing this to you, I love Park Mobile, and I use it all the time. I use it every day. I park out here in the 10 hour, and Lynn told me about it. I think a lot of people don't know about it, and a lot of people need to know about it. So if there's a way we can get that out there, that's great. But I park out there in the 10 hour with Park Mobile, and you're talking to a recipient of many, many, many parking tickets over the years. Many, okay? Um, I have a concern about parking out in front here and that for in the last two weeks six times I have um, observed a city vehicle parked out in front of our um, shop. I'm wondering and I don't know how that works are city vehicles allowed to park in those spaces therefore taking up a valuable space for another person uh, that could go into a business um, or do the city vehicles pay parking because it never has, it's always flashing, expired. So I'm wondering that. I know it's not a lot of revenue, but six times in two weeks is, it's about $40 a month, which is over $400 a year. So I I guess I would ask if, if that's not supposed to be allowed, if we could take a look at that because I, I'm thinking that, this, I heard the city has some parking back there, which is awesome because when I worked for the city, we didn't have that. So, um, I would ask that, and I guess that, that I'm just throwing that out there saying I'm really not in support of this right now. I hope we look at it. I'm not saying that I don't think we should have increase. I think they're big increases and that we should really look at that for. Um, for me, we have a lot of folks that come from all over, from Brattleboro from, to come to see us, and I want them to come to Key, and I want them to be able to do business down here with us. So that's just where I'm coming from. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Gentlemen in the white shirt. Good evening. My name is Paul Keeley, 32 Washington Street. I appreciate the time. Uh, I have several things, some are reiterated from people that have already spoke um, here this evening. Uh, one, the, the loss of spaces, even though we've gained extended time, like on Washington and Court, which is greatly appreciated. Uh, I've seen more from around the courthouse, behind fire. Yes, more spaces are now reserved than being given to city employees. So I feel that there's a loss of, of parking space, a loss of revenue as well. If we're looking to gather revenue, I understand people need to park. However, anybody else that's working, a realtor parking downtown, you need to pay a meter. You know, uh, a, a truck driver needs to pay a, a meter. You know, anybody with any job. So I feel that city people, doesn't matter if you're driving a police car, a fire car, or whatever, you know, pay the meter. It's also revenue. They're doing their job. However, everybody else is doing their job as well. Um, I also work in the downtown area. I'd like to see, currently, b before we increase, enforce and accurately enforce what's already there. The two and three hour time limits is a joke. It's not enforced. And I see this over and over. And I see innocent bystanders, some of my customers, feeding a meter, and then they end up dining longer than they expect. Or possibly in a barber shop, not that I work it, end up extra time there. And they come out, and they got a darn ticket sitting on their, on their thing while they attempted to do the proper thing, feed a meter. 
but because they blew the time, and I didn't know about this mobile parking either, so I, I don't know where that secret's come from, but it's out of the bag tonight. Um, but innocent people are getting tickets after they've attempted to do the right thing, while the parking enforcement agents don't enforce the two-hour limit, they don't enforce the three-hour limit for, for uh, handicap accessible parking, they, you know, enforce what's already there before we expand. You know, they, they don't have in control what's already there. They don't enforce non-parking areas. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And I've had direct quotes from several of the agents So, well, some people we try to give a break to. Awesome. Do it justly, do it fairly to all. That's why I say police, sheriffs, drop a quarter in the meter. You know, why should they get free parking for doing their job? Because real estate agents, you know, school representatives that are downtown purchasing something for their classroom, they're not getting that. They need to put quarter in, so it's in all city employees as well. And, and for the parking garage, I know the one that's on Wall Street that's being uh, worked on, um, with, with, the, with the fees that you charge, you know, okay, um, I'd like to see, this is just a note from my, uh, from me and Payne, uh, the center spaces, birds love to hang out over them. And where are the metered spaces and the people that are paying this, this fee that you're looking to change uh, up by, what was it, about $35, $30 for a quarter? It, it's underneath where all the birds hang out. So when you, when you do the improvements, if you can get rid of the bird hangout, that would be great and appreciated by many cars, I'm sure. While the outside perimeter, where birds have no place to light and hang out on, are more reserved. Again, I'm, I'm not sure who's got them, but I'm, I'm believing possibly downtown officials have those spots where there are no birds. Yeah, maybe just a couple of things I can, I can correct right off. One is, is that we're looking at a $15 increase for the parking. And secondly, uh, on the lower level, we're very much aware of the uh, bird infestation in those areas. We did have the, we had a visitor that was there a little while ago, a hawk, who was helping us out, but uh, he decided to leave. Uh, unfortunately, we've had um, birds uh, in nesting up there. And as soon as we get through this construction portion of it, we're looking for ways to be able to block off that area that the gentleman spoke of on the shelf area in the center to be able to eliminate some of the, the problems we're having with the birds. Good. And some of the other things that you can meet with him afterwards. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yes, sir. Hi, I am Marcel. I live on Leather Street. And uh, mom, and I'm against mom, the, the parking, mom, mom, raising the parking rates. Mom, because I, I, mom, I came from Connecticut. And Connecticut has really, it has really excessive parking rates for like, you know, fines and stuff like that. And what attracted to me to New Hampshire was its ability to be fiscally responsible and to be fit into like you know mom, limit spending and so like that. And uh, mom, and I'm just basically saying that mom, I don't don't want to see this in New in New Hampshire. I don't want to see what I saw in Connecticut, in New Hampshire. And I and I rather just keep it, keep keep it the same or even better. Just like you know, mom, just even get rid of it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, I got to take the mayor first. <laughs> <coughs> I'm losing my job. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you Mr. Chairman, Kendall Lane, Mayor. I just have a quick question, Gary. How do the rates that are being increased here compare with rates in other communities in the state of New Hampshire? Tracy, you're up now. I'm sorry? Oh, no, answer the question. I'm okay. getting the on deck ready. Uh, basically, right now, uh, each city and town that we've, we've actually uh, spoke with and we have numbers for, are they, they have an array of different things. But if you look at just the parking meter rates themselves um, for violations, we'll start with the violation portion of it. Uh, for an overtime meter, which means basically either somebody didn't put money in or it went over the time period. Uh, Concord is $10, uh, Dover is $15, Hanover is $30, uh, 
Nashua is 10, we're five dollars, Manchester is 15, Portsmouth is 15, and we even went to Maine and, and some of you Bradbury, Vermont, uh, who are, are also 15 and 10 dollars. When you look at the actual pricing of meter rates, on street meter rates, um, Concord 75 cents, Dover 75 cents, Hanover depends on where you are at 75 or a dollar per hour. Nashua is the same, $75 or a dollar, excuse me, 75 cents or a dollar per hour. We're 50 cents per hour. Uh, Manchester is 75 cents. Portsmouth is a dollar and Portland, Maine is a dollar. 75 cents also in Brattle Grove, Vermont. For garages and lots, uh, Concord is 50 cents. Dover is 75 cents. Hanover is 35 cents. Uh, Nashua is 50 cents. We are 20 cents. Manchester 75 cents and 50 depending on the parking lot and Portsmouth is 75 cents and Portland Maine is a dollar 75. Those are the towns that uh, basically have parking some type of parking meters uh, within their town. A lot of the towns uh, are put on any of the parking is, is put on the general fund uh, so the taxpayers pay for that. Can you reproduce that for absolutely? Our Education. And I just want to note there's a couple of towns right now that are looking to increase. One is Nashville and one is Manchester. They're looking to increase their, their rates. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Tracy Keating. I own Life is Sweet and I'm also chair of the King Downtown Group. Um, so I wanted to say a few things. Um, first, that I was one of the people who was anti uh, raising rates last year. Um, and I kind of was quoted in the paper and it became a whole thing. Um, I will say after over the last year, Gary's really worked a lot with the downtown group and we're very thankful for that. He's heard our concerns, he's validated us and what we are worried about. He's come to us and I will say he's been to more meetings than most merchants downtown, um, informing us about what's going on. Um, he was uh, a big proponent um, of allowing or encouraging us to ask for free weekends four times a year, um, which we were granted this year. Um, and so I think when you say that this is rushed and out of nowhere, I think that's not accurate, at least as a business owner and as somebody who is really, unfortunately, the main communication arm for the downtown merchants, um, that's not particularly accurate. Um, we have had many, many meetings over the last year regarding parking, regarding changes. We have sent out, um, for example, about the automated payments. That's on every meter. Also, most stores have the cards in the stores. We've also sent out notices through the downtown group. We worked really closely with the city um, preparing for the inevitable, the inevitability of rate increases. That's the reality is, is for downtown, parking is, ne is a necessity. There are, um, turnover is a necessity. Um, most of us would like um, the cars to turn over more rapidly. Uh, not more than two hours, but I mean, um, there are, when they are not being regulated and chalked, it doesn't turn over. That is true. I have plenty of business owners, four above me, who plug the meter all day in front of my store. I also have the court down the block where jurors park all around me and police cars all day. So, I mean, I'm existing in that and living with that. <coughs> but I think um, one of the things is we have a parking perception problem. People take a lap, they don't see a spot, so they go. When there are other options, which I think we talked about the free parking up the blocks on court in Washington, um, expanding uh, or improving signage, saying without Gilbo, which is much cheaper. Uh, the uh, court, what's the lot behind Margarita's, that one. Again, very rarely used. That's where the farmer's market is now. Um, and so we've worked a lot with Gary um, to help facilitate and encourage and educate our customers about that and encourage and educate each other about what our options are. The bottom line is, is that um, the things we love about downtown about the beautiful flowers and the maintenance and the parking availability and it looking pretty the reality is that has to get paid for and most of us as business owners understand that that this is not a huge exorbitant expense if the customer's not going to come downtown because it's 20 cents more 
I mean, nobody's happy about paying 20 cents more, but that's the reality is that we have to pay for it. Um, because in the end, what most of us would like is a parking garage. And if this is a step in that direction to help us to get there, then we are willing to be on board for that. So I just wanted to voice my personal support, but also I will say I invited all of my fellow merchants to be here. Um, I think there's two of us. So I'm just going to say, I mean, I understand some people are upset, and that's their right. Um, but the truth is, is that over the last year, we've all had plenty of opportunity to converse about the subject, um, to be educated, and to express our views. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Heather Fish. I reside in Swansea, New Hampshire at 15 Ridgeby Road. I am a co-owner of a new salon in Keene, down on Central Square. And um, of course, I'm opposed to the rate increases as well. However, I think what we're finding to be an issue, again, are with the two-hour maximum time on the meters. For us, our clients aren't only, you know, it, it's not possible to go out, feed a meter, because they want you out of there in two hours. So people are getting actual violations for being in the spots for longer than two hours. It's not always um, applicable uh, um, to have people go park in a 10-hour spot that's way up the road. Not everybody knows about that. For myself personally, I have a lot of clientele that travel up from Connecticut, um, way over in Vermont. I have clients that come to see me from New York. It's hard to tell people you know, we want them to come here, and I, I have probably about 250 clients that come see me, um, that they can't park for longer than two hours, and they're getting tickets. So my question is, I guess, what what can we do to make it more, um, you know, I guess for them to be able to come and find a place to park without being ticketed, some signs that make it more aware that there's parking, longer parking, or is it possible to increase the meter times to three hours, you know, or have some areas that have that? It's just the two hours are really difficult for our industry. Um, I think that's that's our biggest our biggest problem. So, thank you. Thank you. I don't think we're going to solve this this evening. Uh, there's an awful lot of information and a lot of good input has come out. Uh, committee questions. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I'm Gary Ian, Leverage Street. I would just add that this did come up a year ago. I, I like the fact that the proposed changes are not as harsh as they were a year ago. Um, I also like the fact that there have been changes such as expanding the long-term parking on Roxbury Street. Um, however, this ultimately the parking scheme that's set up is based on the idea that people are going to violate the law probably just because they don't have change on them or because they forgot to fill a meter. And it's based on the idea of profiting off of uh, like innocuous disobedience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, like basing the revenues and resources of a place off of that is a bad idea to begin with. Um, it's, it's very difficult to make sure that uh, income and expenses are the same, but I'd say even more so with, with such a sporadic system as parking enforcement. So moving away from the idea of meters, I think, and uh, and, and taxes on like not, not remembering to fill a meter would be a good direction to move in. Suggestion. Thank you. Council Clark, I Yeah, I was going to make an amendment. Well, we could do we could do that. Uh, my personal <coughs> favorite would be put this on more time till the next meeting, so we can gather some more public comment and uh, digest what's okay, in front of us. Well, I was going to ask if this is something we were going to add on to. I'd prefer that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's parts of this that I'm okay with, and this, I think like everybody else, there's parts of it that I'm not. Um, the parts I'm okay with is the, the increase in the handicap parking. I have no problem with that, and I have no problem with the quarterly parking rates or the rental fees going up. Um, I, I do oppose the increase in the hourly costs, and especially in the fines. Um, you know, I, I don't think increasing the fines really affects anybody from staying late or not staying later. You, you get a, 
Nobody likes getting a parking fine no matter what it is. You get that orange stick and I can take it and be $5 or $25. And, you know, people are just mad. I know because I get my share of it. Um, so, and also, one of the uh, parts that I oppose is, is extending the change of hours later into the evening. And the problem that I have with that is because that time of evening, a lot of people are going into restaurants and spending a lot more time in there. And I know we have the app where they can extend from uh, somebody's cell phone. But usually when you're in a restaurant like that with a group of friends, that's not what you're thinking about. Um, so that part of it is why I oppose. During the day, I think it's more of a, a, a come and go issue, people going into stores, people moving around, spending less time. Um, even at lunch, people are in and out of the restaurants in less than an hour because that's where the lunch break is. So that's why I have a problem extending it later into the evenings. Um, as far as the, uh, the concept of parking turnover with parking meters, I do agree with that. As Councilor Greenwald mentioned years ago, we eliminated parking, uh, parking meters downtown. That was a disaster. So I understand the concept of it. Um, one of the speakers said tonight they used uh, downtown Laconia doesn't have meters. Um, that's probably the worst example you could use because downtown Laconia doesn't have any businesses. So uh, I, I would never like to get to the point where I'm like uh, downtown Laconia. That would be an absolute disaster. I think I would like us to take a, another look at this or a longer look at this. Um, it was brought up from you know, former Councilor Bradshaw about, um, about expenditures. The expenditure for the operating expenditure from uh, fiscal year 2010 to projected fiscal year 2016 goes from 744,000 up to a million 52. It's about a 26% increase um, over six years. I think we need to take a look at our uh, expenditures also. Um, I'm not saying we haven't, I just think we need to get out a, uh, um, a sharper pen um, and I think we need to go through the, uh, through the budget book and, and, and honestly take a sharper look. I, I, I applaud Mr. Lamro for all the work that he's done. Um, he's <coughs> put tons of hours into this. Uh, but this particular issue downtown, um, from what I have seen, the community is adequately opposed to the increases here. I, I know it's not huge. I know other communities charge more than we do. and. We're kind of looked at as a bargain, but you know, in Keene, we don't, we don't have a lot of bargains. And I think if we can give people one bargain, it should be at parking. So I, I certainly agree with what I've heard from my other uh, comments on this committee tonight. I would, would like uh, us not to uh, make a recommendation tonight. I, because if there is, I will be voting no at this particular time. I think I'd like us to take a lot longer look at this and see if there's anything better we can come up with, especially looking at uh, decreasing operating, operating expenditures. <clears throat> City Manager. Well, thank you, Councillor. I, I think that something been said here this evening would be very interesting to take a look at, unless uh, Mr. Lamer already has an answer to it, and that is the concept of a three-hour uh, meter versus the two-hour meter. Uh, that, that actually has, I think, some interest, at least I think it does, and maybe Gary has an answer to that already, but if he doesn't, that's certainly something I would think we could be looked at. Perhaps not all the two-hour meters would change, but maybe some could, because uh, that does seem to fit the more modern style of, of people, but it's just a thought. The other would be the um, the concept of where is the money going and how is it, you know, and whether the budget's really gone up or not. And I'm concerned that we, we don't differentiate between the operating cost as well as the uh, the capital costs. And the capital costs certainly have gone up. The operating costs may have actually stayed pretty close to the same. But that too could certainly be explored, and we can come back with more information about those things. Good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Duffy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> I may through you to uh, the city manager or Gary or Steve. Uh, my understanding is this came up last year, and as far as uh, concerns the committee has raised uh, about, my understanding is we've gone through that. Expenditures, where we can cut, things like that. So I don't want to certainly uh, comment on the process or disrespect the committee, but I think the only thing I've heard this evening that really needs to be looked at are some of the concerns about three hours uh, turnover and specifically city vehicles using <coughs> public parking spaces uh, for an extended amount of time. My understanding is we thoroughly looked at it this year uh, and my feeling is that uh, really let's focus on what's pertinent and uh, let the full council look at it and decide sooner rather than later. I, I really don't think this is an issue that needs to be dragged out any further. Uh, it's actually, this issue has come up on my time on the council 
four or five times. Uh, we know what's happening to the parking fund. And if we don't do anything, things will get worse. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I guess to answer, not to debate, but uh, I, I think it's very important that the public and the downtown community, which is the, uh, the merchants, building owners, and residents, understand and buy into it. Yes, we went through it a year ago, and there was a lot of questions asked and answered, but that was a year ago. You know, uh, and I think that uh, part of our mission on this committee, or at least as this chairman, is uh, communication to that community so they understand if there is to be an increase, why and what. And there are so many moving pieces within this. Maybe it can be massaged. This three-hour idea just came out. Of, I think it's a great one. So um, another two weeks isn't going to bother me. I can. Council? I got two things in. I think the city manager may, was hitting on it. But when you get this capital activity structure slash block rehabilitation, you're doing it in a negative. You're not, it's not in a positive. It's not saying, okay, in fiscal year 16, um, where you get a million five, million 52, you're not, you've got, um, it doesn't, if it doesn't have it, it says the um, projected rate, I guess I'd say. But you're not telling me right now, if I look at any one of these, I don't know how much is going to go into capital improvement. Yeah, it capital. yeah, it just says, so if it's all of a sudden, I look at 13 and it's 805, and then I look at, um, like I said, 16 is 1 million 52, and then, so is the expense, your expenses going up. That isn't personal expenses, that is, there's a capital project going on there, and we have no idea. Nothing in this paper tells me where it's going and how much it's going, and that gets confusing. Yes. Yeah. For example, you know, the salary adjustments have been between one and two percent, so they're certainly not driving those costs. Right. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think that you understand what would be desired <coughs> in, in terms of reporting. Right. Yes. I'd just like to say that there are there are no capital costs in these numbers, in these, this operation, but something that is tricky is you're looking at a budget versus actual, opposed to budget versus budget. Council Powers. Well, if we send this back to them, I think we need to be, we owe them, you know, a, a, a direction. What, what is it we want from them in terms of analysis? <coughs> what, my bigger concern is, is our, what are our priorities? We're going to have a downtown parking system. Is that our priority? And then <coughs> what shall be the level? We need to answer those questions, and we can figure out how much it's going to cost after that. Um, yes, we've been talking about this for a little more than a year. Uh, maybe we should have talked a little more in between about some of the nuances of the, of the little parts. But there is no question that we have neglected the capital work or the major work to these structures over the last 10 or 15 years. Now, is that you know, something we did on purpose or we broke? Or, you know, there are a number of reasons to do it, but we're now paying, we're now going to pay for it. We've got structures that you know, were giving us trouble and they're going to continue to give us trouble. So we need to prioritize what kind of parking we're going to have and how we're going to fill that parking and then figure out what, what the funding is. And, you know, I'm guessing we're pretty close. We, you know, we're pretty close to where we're going to be, but got to get that evidence put together and be able to articulate it so people can agree or, or not agree, but at least there's a full understanding of what we're attempting to do here. Okay. Council. Hey. Um, I came in late, so this question's been answered. Um, Forgive me, but has there been any discussion in terms of if we increase the rates, we're going to have to change the meters and how much cost as far as you know time and labor and um, uh, how much the actual uh, equipment's going to cost and, and any other types of um, <coughs> expenses associated with making these changes? It was not asked. So. Sure. Um, basically, uh, these these uh, systems that we currently have is, is manufactured by Duncan. 
And Duncan, what we do is we, uh, whatever the increase would be, whatever the rates would be, mm -hmm. they send us a, it's actually a computerized wand that actually goes into the slot and it will refigure re the, the amounts. The wand is approximately $3,300 to be able to do that. And uh, basically we would go out and it takes seconds for a unit in order to change it. $3,300 for the wand? $300. $300. And that, would we be purchasing or, or is, has there been a suggestion on how many we purchase and how much time is involved and how many meters do we have? We have a little over 800 meters and this is a rental unit that actually instead of buying the unit and putting all that, that money out because as we're aware we, we changed our meter rates uh, the last time we changed was 13 years ago and prior to that was 13 years. So it's not worthwhile for us to purchase the equipment. Um, so what we would do is we'd let them know what we needed. They would program that wand. We would receive the wand for $300 and we would go out and do that. My anticipation is it would take probably a day with one person to be able to change them all. 800 meters? Yes. Like I said, it's, it's literally putting the wand in and it changes the, the uh, system. You don't have to manually change anything in it because they're computerized. Okay, thank you. I, um, I support the chair putting back on um, more time, but I doubt very much it is going to change because this, this is such a, um, everything is tied in. You can't change <coughs> one thing without affecting the end line. So there are going to be so moving parts and I've heard so many people change this, change this, change this, change this. But I think when you leave here tonight, you have to basically change almost everything. And I don't know how you can get with the number that you came here with today. Thank you. Well, good news on that one. Because um, the, I'm not going to make the, the, the motion tonight for an amendment. I will when it fully, fully when it comes back to us is the, the time period. Because I did ask the question about uh, uh, the relativity of what figures of on page two and whether or not it had anything to do with the time changing the number of hours and I was told that it didn't because they didn't have that data. So that's one of the changes, um, you know, instead of seven o'clock, I'd rather it to be six o'clock because, you know, that is out, you know, it's adding another hour per, per week of, um, excuse me, um, yeah, five hours per week from 86 because of Saturday uh, to your labor costs. Um, You know, the, 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 thing, the thing about the mobile card, you know, we really got to do a better job telling everybody about that. Because, you know, there is a sticker on the meter, but, you know, well, I guess it's because it's been winter so long that, you know, that it's just got to be light where we can see, the, you know, see it and everything. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of people don't know about that. And um, especially it's going to be, it's going to be a problematic uh, 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 as you get into the, uh, into the into the later season, uh, you know, past six o'clock, people aren't going to be able to see that anyway. I don't like the idea of it um, simply because it's going to add confusion when somebody is coming into town to have dinner with their family. It's going to you know add a little more stress. One thing I don't want when I just get out of dinner with my family is to come back and find a ticket and God, all the good time I just had is gone. You know, um, so I'd like it to be on you know in the background notes that. That's one thing that I am going to be uh, doing when it does come back, and it is one of the things that we can do uh, without changing the matrix. Okay. Uh, again, I think it's pretty obvious this is coming back again. So is this something pressing? Look, if you don't mind, I have just a couple extra thoughts uh, regarding the game for the well, regarding the hours. If it's to seven o'clock, that'll actually give people an even greater disincentive to not come to these or to come to these meetings. Right? It's you guys already want people to come to these meetings, and frequently uh, I've heard many counselors bemoan the lack of attendance at these meetings. And, and now, you know, were these meters to be till seven o'clock, everyone in this room would have had to have paid the meter in order to simply come and attend a, a city council meeting. So that's another reason to not extend the hours. Um, you know, I think it was cool. I heard the idea about the free parking on weekends. Uh, I like that idea, or at least four weekends a year, and it's sort of similar to the Christmas week, where there's no parking enforcement, at least for the meters. I think there may be a two-hour enforcement uh, during Christmas week, but I think that's more evidence that during one of the busiest shopping weeks of the year, 
supposedly turnover should be more important than anything else at any time, everything's okay for that one week, and you know, lots of people come out. Really the shop. two hours in, in effect. Right, but the meters aren't. Correct. Right. So again, suggesting that maybe we don't really need the meters after all. And uh, finally, to what uh, the business, uh, I think it was Tracy, said earlier about uh, the beautification you know, and uh, the fact that the city needs to pay for those things. Well, maybe the city doesn't need to pay for those things. We have uh, the Shoilet Park is taken care of by a great group of volunteers, from what I understand. And uh, certainly the business owners, uh, if there weren't the parking rates that we have downtown today, uh, they might get actually more business, and then the business owners themselves could actually pitch in through whatever downtown association and uh, improve the beautification of downtown, take it into their own hands rather than relying on the city. And I, I heard her saying that she hopes that uh, that once the city gets these extra revenues, if the rates increase, to sort of semi begrudgingly supporting it, that she hopes that eventually a, a parking garage will come out of this. But I, I hope she's not disappointed ultimately when the city continues to mismanage uh, the funds and the bureaucracy and ultimately what the business owners want, which is that extra parking, doesn't materialize. Again, if all of the parking was in the hands of the property owners downtown, if somebody thought a parking garage was a good idea, they could buy the property that they wanted to put the garage on and put up the parking garage. Uh, I don't think that needs to be a city function either. So thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think most everyone has spoken once, twice, three times, and we've uh, uh, punished the ice arena and the uh, item 20 folks for making sit through this. Uh, might there be a motion? Uh, yeah, move we put this uh, up more time. Okay. Anything further from the committee, the public, all in favor? We have more time. Uh, this will reappear at the next agenda, so. It's a good way to grow a crowd. <laughs> After uh, 35 years on Main Street, if you want to get attendance at, at a downtown merchant's meeting, just say the P word. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.